Now, I've already spoken about flaws and how they're a part of you and how they make it impossible for you to be perfect. But they're more than just imperfections. They're a part of who you are and a very important one at that. Yes, flaws are flaws. The name itself tells you what they are. These are things about yourself that you see as undesirable, negative, or whatever. You do not like these things about yourself. A smoking habit, a temper, whatever have you. It's some part of yourself that you find to be undesirable or negative. Now, that being what it is, you can't pretend it doesn't exist. You can't just sit there and say, I hate that part of me. It goes away. I'm just going to pretend it's not there. I'm not going to deal with that. Because it is there, it is real, and it is a part of you. As I noted, an important one at that. The simple reason being is you are a sum total of all of the bits and pieces of your character. Whether it's a virtuous aspect or a terrible temper. Whether you're charitable or angry or lecherous as well as hopeful, it doesn't matter. You, everyone's a mix of a virtue and vice, if you will. You have both elements to you, and if you want to overcome your flaws, the first step, uh, this can't be mitigated, by the way, the first step is accepting it, that it's there. You cannot solve any problem that you refuse to admit exists. That's a very simple truth that works here. If you have a flaw, you have to sit down and admit to yourself, I have this problem. I have this trait. If you want to deal with it, again, accept it. Now, moving on from that, it's not just about accepting these problems to deal with them. It's about understanding that they contribute to the totality of your character. Having these flaws has changed who you are in some way. You've had to deal with your, again, raging temper. I like the example because it's a flaw many people have. And it's difficult to control for many of them. A lot of people I know with temper issues, whether drunk, sober, whatever, they wish they didn't have it. They wish that when they weren't so pissed off, you know, that they didn't get so pissed off. But dealing with that has changed each of them, has changed them into perhaps a stronger person because they've had to deal with a temptation that others don't. Many people have their anger in check, for the most part at least. <laughs> and they can deal with that, but others, like people with temper issues, have had to strain against a temptation that is negative and it's made them stronger. They have more willpower for the most part. Unless they give into it, that's a different problem. Though. If they're not giving into it, they're learning how to deal with it. They've accepted it. They understand that it is a problem. And by learning to accept it and deal with it, they've become stronger people on the whole. They have become more complete, if you will. It's pushed them to become better people because they have to deal with it. And your flaws have done the same for you, whether you can admit to it or not. You've had to deal with those things being there. You're pyromaniac and you're not setting fires? Well, you're showing restraint, control, temperance. These things, they're important for all aspects of life. And wherever you learn them from, well, they're lessons learned, right? They're still important. And if you can learn from your own flaws and grow because you have them, like any obstacle, you can learn from it and become stronger by overcoming it. By jumping the hurdle repeatedly, you become better at jumping. By overcoming your personal demons, you become better at dealing with the world. The logic follows. For a good example of what I'm talking about, relationships. People have flaws in them. No one's perfect. And whoever you hook up with, eventually you're going to discover things about them that you consider flaws, or they consider flaws and you have to deal with. The simple truth is, again, there's no one perfect, as I've iterated before. The flaws that they have must be acceptable to you. You must be able to love them for their flaws, as well as the merits of who they are. Their flaws are a part of them. They're not just going to vanish. You can't change them on a core level unless they want to be changed. And even then, some people can't change core aspects of themselves. It's who they are. And you're going to have to learn to live with that and furthermore love it. You're going to have to take their flaws as well as the things you love about them naturally and love the whole package. People are inseparable from their flaws. You have to take it as is. And I don't mean to say that people can't change or that flaws can't be completely overcome. I've even made a video talking about how you can grow. You change, you evolve, and become more. All of this is true. But we also must accept about ourselves that there are things that we can't change or don't want to change for whatever reason that are negative. 
Maybe there is a core temptation to your being to do something, and no matter what you've done, you can't change it. You can only fight it, control it. Well, this is letting you know that that isn't a failure on your part. That isn't something you should be ashamed of. You're fighting it, aren't you? You're controlling it. You're becoming better because of that. You're stronger. That's nothing to be ashamed of. In a way, you're growing because you can't change a core aspect of yourself, and thus you're changing anyway. It doesn't matter how the change expresses itself, whether it's because you change a flaw or you change in response to a flaw. You're still changing. You're still evolving. Whether you learn how to deal with other people's flaws or your own, they, they work together, too. That relationship point works with your points, too. You can learn to accept yourself more by learning to accept someone else, and vice versa. It becomes experience for dealing with other people and yourself, either way. It's a skill that's uniquely applicable to being in human civilization, because we're all flawed beings. We're all human. Learning how to deal with yourself means you learn how to deal with humanity. Just something to think about. So. <laughs> You're already boring yourself. Okay. No, I'm just actually feeling coffee plus tired. <laughs> so it's like jitter, sleep at the same time. But anyway. How do I deal with it? We put bombs by the side of the road so the cars... <laughs> they can rage, start throwing cars. But 